Gang, gang. Mmm, ice cream, so good. Thank you, Jackie. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Oh, special. Gang, gang. Ra, ra, ra. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Balloon. Gang, gang. Gang, gang. Mmm, that was good. Lemonade. Hee ha, yes. You got me feeling like a cowgirl. Let me run it, huh? Hee ha, yes. You got me feeling like a cowgirl. Let me run it, huh? Slay, huh? Slay, huh? So the other day, a friend of mine sent me this young lady who uh, apparently is a 19-year-old young lady from Canada who's been going viral on Twitter for her TikToks. And in her TikTok, she, I guess, impersonates an NPC. And for those of you who don't know, a, an NPC is a non-player character. And it's a video game term uh, that refers to characters in the video game who are controlled by the computer. And with some of the um, developments in AI, people are talking about incorporating artificial intelligence into the NPC so they can do their own thing as opposed to what you see on games like Grand Theft Auto where they just regurgitate pre-scripted phrases over and over and over again. But this young lady has been going viral uh, primarily because she makes a good bit of money according to some of the reports. She bought a house recently, about a $1 million house, I believe, and People are talking about it. There have been jokes, there have been um, memes, but I think there's a lot more to this. Yes, yes. Jesus, so good. Jesus, so good. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. God, God. Like I've said in some of my videos and some of my case studies, we have commodified women. So much so that women commodify themselves these days, particularly when you consider how terrible the economy is, you know, the job market is in the toilet, so you got to get it how you live. Some women turn to OnlyFans, some women turn to the traditional stripping and prostituting, or other women turn to social media, right? So you'll see the IG models. In this case, you see the NPC thing, which for some people apparently is a fetish. And, you know, as we are venturing into this new world of loneliness, of individuality, I think this is going to be one of the consequences. A lot of men are without real human female interactions, so they turn to social media, they turn to the internet to scratch that itch. And when you consider how prevalent video games are, I'm not surprised by this young lady's hustle. Thank you, Louise. Gang, gang, gang. Hey, what is wrong with you? Don't what's up? Really? Thank you, baby. This is so cute. Thank you, Luizy. Thank you, Camilla. Yes, 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 yes. So a few days ago, I watched this video by Kidology. Shout out to Kidology. If one of her fans is watching this, tell her to email me back. I think a collaboration between us would be uh, really interesting. But she talked about the business of women capitalizing on men's grievances and particularly in the red pill, in the manosphere. She talked about just pearly things. She talked about some other white women that I don't really know, but according to her, they have found the formula to exploit men's rage. And sometimes they position themselves as unintentional bimbos, but unintentional bimbos who side with men and who believe in the things that men are fighting for and who are men's rights activists. And she talked about how it's a charade. Um, so I recommend you guys go watch her video, but I'm reminded of a conversation I had with a buddy of mine when the Just Pearly things thing first happened. And I told him, you know, I wasn't surprised by it. I never believed her. Her shtick is inconsistent with who she is. She is the woman that she's telling men to complain about, but I was disappointed by the fact that a lot of men didn't catch on. But according to him, he said that it is better for her to parrot Manosphere talking points than whether or not she's authentic. And for me, I found that really problematic. I told him, I was like, you know, People like Tia San Johnson should, the, should be the ones with the support, should be the ones with the fanfare, should be the ones with the views. But unfortunately, we've watered down our points to the point where any woman off the street, anybody can watch a few Kevin Samuels videos or a few Red Pill videos and become more successful <laughs> than some of our intellectuals in this space. And for me, I think it signified two things. Number one, I don't know if this space has the foresight to consider some of the issues with how open 
and how accommodating the space is. And then number two, I think some of the men in this space, their idea of progress would actually not be progress at all. And what I told him was it's only a matter of time until strippers get tired of the pole and they realize that this is the new hustle. The new hustle is to regurgitate to men, to men who only see women as a commodity, to men who just want to hear their thoughts repeated back to them, to regurgitate to them what they want to hear. And now it's intellectual prostitution. And I think that's why we see the Just Pearly things. That's why we see some of the women in uh, the black manosphere. That's why we see, even on, on TikTok, the whole NPC phenomenon. Because I, I think it speaks to the fact that just like we talk about women not seeing men as human beings, I think a lot of men don't see women as human beings. And that's why they're okay with, despite the fact that she doesn't believe or stand for, and she's not consistent with anything she's saying, just dance. If you ask, well, I'm staying tonight, I gotta be like all being. I think that's one of the uh, consequences of social media. It's the consequences of this particular generation where we pedestalize entertainment, pedestalize attention, prioritize these things over actual substance. So even with some of my viewers, I've, I've asked the question, what is it that you are hoping comes out of what we're doing here? When you project out some of your favorite creators or you know the content that you consume, how does the success of that content or the person creating that content improve prove whether we're talking about men's rights, whether we're talking about future men and future women, or whether we're talking about the community or the country. But I don't think enough of us take a second to actually consider these things. And just like I said in the last video, our complaints still fuel them. Complaining is support. And instead of us honing in our time, our energy, and our effort, encouraging what we want to see more of, we use that time, energy, and effort talking shit about the things we quote unquote hate. But really, we just love to hate them. At the beginning of my last video, I showed a clip of Sexy Red doing a podcast also called We Need to Talk. And in that podcast, she mispronounced analytics, but she was talking about how the a good chunk of her fan base is male. And it's something that I was surprised by, but also not surprised by at the same time. Number one, when you consider the whole who do you love to hate phenomenon, but also when you consider this generation of boys, this generation of boys that weren't raised around male authority, this generation of boys that were raised primarily by women and primarily by women in distress. And then also this generation in general that just thinks everything is a joke. They're raised on social media. They're raised on 15 seconds of fame. And I wonder what are the consequences of this? I was uh, having a conversation with my barber the other day and he was talking about his son and how his son is just kind of just floating through life. Apparently somebody he knew died recently, but he, he didn't make it to the funeral because he didn't wake up on time or something. I was talking to another buddy of mine. He was talking about his 20 year old little brother who similar to my little brother is just directionless in life. Despite the, despite the fact that they are in network with people like myself, people like him, who are doing things and who can help point them in the right direction. And a part of me thinks it's a failing of our parents. I think it's, I think it's a failing of our, our mothers. I know in my situation, my little brother was definitely overmothered. But I think there's something else. I, 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 I haven't figured it out yet, but this generation is just, they're just there. And I hate to sound like an old head, but like when I'm comparing it to my generation, even generations prior, there was a sense of desire for something. But when I observe my little brother as an example, there's not that sense of desire. There's not that sense of aspiration. There's a quote I saw somewhere that said, strong men create easy times. Easy times create weak men. Weak men create hard times. Hard times create strong men, and it's just a cycle. And I'm hoping that's what it is. I'm hoping this incel culture, this virtual culture is at the horizon of something better. The roses smell amazing. Ah, chili. Ah, yes, crown. You got me feeling like a king. 
Yeehaw, you got me feeling like a cowgirl. Let me write it. Renee, welcome. Loner, welcome. The roses smell amazing, baby. Thank you for the likes. Thank you for the likes. I know this morning I wasn't lying because a lot of radio was calling on my phone this morning all the way to Montreal, New York City, and Atlanta, and many more. Yes, you know your girl Pinky Doll be popping for real? So in a few days, you're gonna see me in many radios or blog. So be ready for it. And you know, a lot of people say, yo, one day you're gonna flap. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry, baby girl. Baby boy, I'm here to stay. So you see that face? You're gonna see that face forever. Forever. And that's on God. That's on God. So you better be ready for my next move because it's about to be a checkmate. With this young lady, I think it's unfortunate because the reality is if her whole shtick is acting like AI while AI is developing at an astronomical pace how long can she keep this up <laughs> somebody combines chat gpt with synesthesia she's out of a job she's out of a hustle they're digital models now last year we were talking about a digital rapper now you can dub rappers voices their cadence their style and you can distill all the things that black culture used to be necessary for with AI and regurgitate it back to us. You know, we talk a lot about replacement theory and white people's fear of being replaced and being redundant or obsolete. And we don't realize that's happening to us too. It's partly because we celebrate white mediocrity, partly because we're too easily entertained. And also we're allowing ourselves to be lulled to sleep by the virtual world. So this is only the beginning, and I have no idea where we're going. My message is simple. Attention is a new currency, just like data. And I encourage each and every one of you to audit what it is that you're consuming, why it is that you're consuming it, and what is the ultimate consequence of this thing growing? What's the consequence of your favorite content creator making it was the consequence of the fact that certain people in the quote-unquote manosphere get a certain number of views and other people struggle to get half of that despite the fact that their quality is 10 times the popular person what's the consequence of just celebrating women for regurgitating what you know that they don't believe because it's inconsistent with their lives. And just like Kidology said in her video, Pearl is just the beginning. She's unattractive. But wait till these OnlyFans models peep game. Wait till these strippers peep game. We already have one in the black manosphere. I hope y'all are paying attention. Bro, we gotta hit, we gotta hit this little bro, party. It's boring, bro. Let me get the ox, bro. Let me play something, bro. Let me tee us up, bro, for it goes, bro. <laughs> You like my voice? It's on you on. This ain't your way till you see it in the dome. Did you just bite your index finger? Bro, come on, bro. Who is this? Bro, sexy red, bro. Bro, she go hard, bro. But and she I, ain't, I ain't pulling up to this, and you ain't ever right. in your life. All right, bro. All right. You ain't ever in your life. All right, let me play some else. Let me play some else. Biting your finger. Let me like play some else. Let me play some else. Me and I'm having fun. This looking bad. Got a stupid bird. Ski, ski, you my bolo. Did you want the ox, bro? Bro, turn it. Did you want the ox? Bro, we not pulling. We not right, pulling bro. up to the function. Listening to this, bro. I know this dude did not just bring <laughs> these too much.